Can Ochi defeat every boss from Pikmin 4 all by himself? Ever since Pikmin 4 is released, everyone has been talking about the one dog to rule them all. The most broken Captain Pikmin Dogman Cap Dogman to have ever been released in this series. The mission was simple. Go through every single boss in Pikmin 4 and defeat them with only Ochi. The most powerful, dangerous, and scary enemies in the Pikmin 4 game versus Ochi in a battle to the death to see who would come out victorious. I needed to find out who was on Ochi's hit list, so I pulled up the Pikmin wiki, which has a list of bosses, and found out that these guys are the bosses, or at least these ones are considered bosses. While it was extremely scary seeing some of these dangerous enemies listed on here, I knew I couldn't give up here. In Ochi's most difficult fight, he gave it his all and barely came out victorious. As the next challenger approached, Ochi was unfazed and razor focused. The fight lasted a total of 7 seconds. Pumba put up a good fight, but alas, without Timon he never stood a chance. I thought fighting these high tier enemies would get boring, so I decided to fight this low tier one that no one has ever lost a Pikmin to in the entirety of its existence. That was the next logical step. Apparently, this still counts as a standard enemy. Alright. When you're fighting with Ochi, I guess everything is on easy mode. I meticulously bit their face until they died. Saying that out loud sounds messed up, but hey, it's not my fault the game was designed like that. The next victim was the Master Hop, and this fight was actually a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Like the name suggests, the Master Hop hops like a master. He hops crazily. There's literally zero cooldown between each of his hops. He is truly the master of hopping. However, it didn't matter how many times he hippity hoppity, I wasn't getting off his property, and therefore, he was eventually defeated. The Arctic Cannon Beetle. This was just a waiting game. He makes snowball, he drop icicles from the sky in the summer. That's pretty dope. But it didn't matter how cool this boss was because if you mess with the best, you go down like the rest. And therefore, the Arctic Cannon Beetle was defeated. The Mammoth Snoot Whacker was next up on the hit list. The fight mainly comprised of Ochi using his rush ability and repeatedly stun locking the enemy until it was finally defeated. I felt bad knocking around the Melephant because he kinda just sits there very sad when you have to stun lock him, but it had to be done. The Talk Stool was the next enemy. This enemy is actually quite unique because it actually kinda becomes immune to damage during its damage phase. Yeah, it's ironic, I know. You can still get a little bit of a nibble in here and there, but it's not as easy as during the regular phase. Anyways, this boss was defeated easily. The Bulborb was next up. Oh, my bad. The Jumbo Bulborb was next up. You can clearly see that this guy is great at hiding. That's the big difference between him and the regular one. This Bulborb goes down just like a regular Bulborb. That's, that's pretty crazy, yeah, I know. The Titan Blowhog. It's an enemy. He's pretty lit, but he doesn't really pose any difficulty to you or Ochi. The Blizzarding Blowhog is also an enemy. You gotta stay frosty when fighting this enemy or nothing will happen because frozen Pikmin don't die and Ochi also defeats this thing even easier when he doesn't have Pikmin. Next up, the devs at Nintendo had planned for this event. They knew that people with the three brain cells like myself would attempt a challenge like this using only Ochi to defeat every boss. When they brought this boss out of retirement, they brought him back for this moment. The Horned Cannon Beetle is one of the only enemies that Ochi cannot defeat by himself. The funny thing is, I was doing this exact same challenge with two purple Pikmin. They were teaming up to defeat every single boss, but they couldn't be thrown high enough in order to take down the Horned Cannon Beetle. So, this was one of the two bosses that two purple Pikmin could not defeat. Three if you count this guy, because it literally takes like two hours to defeat this thing using only two Pikmin. So, this boss would live to see another day and I moved on to the next victim, I mean, opponent. The Bloomcat Bloister. Send Ochi by himself and he can't figure out for the life of him on how to defeat this thing. But, control Ochi and you can take this thing down no problemo. Out of the tough enemy encounters and onto the minor bosses in Pikmin 4, we start out with our battle against Sonic the Hedgehog. To my surprise, the Porco Lion actually runs away. Being the fastest thing alive wouldn't help him here, and he got defeated just like everything else on this list. Apart from Mr. Beetle, of course. One of the most iconic enemies up next, we had the Burrowing Snagret. This boss takes a little bit of patience to defeat, but assuming you don't smash your controller waiting for this bird to pop up and out of the ground, you can do it. As the saying goes, the early dog catches the bird. So that's exactly what I did. The Krusty Krab was up next. So I tried to complete my order, but to no one's surprise, he doesn't serve dogs. 
as I didn't have the minimum amount of 15 Pikmin weight. This purchase was out of my reach. On to the next item on the menu. The bug-eyed Cromad was the next enemy on the menu. The only way to deal damage to this was for me to repeatedly bite their eyes until they died. Okay, if you take that out of context, that also sounds pretty messed up, but it's not my fault the game was designed like that. Baldy Longlegs was our next challenger. Now, I was expecting to teach Ochi how to fly in order to defeat this boss and reach its hitbox. To my surprise, you can actually just bite its feet until it dies. It's a painful way to go out, like stepping on a Lego. The Pikmin equivalent of stubbing your toe, only this time it's a dog repeatedly biting your toe. Out of the mini bosses and on to the major bosses. We start with the Foolix. This one actually requires you to understand the mechanics and not brute force it, like I did with every single other boss on this list. Despite having a cool mechanic, the Foolix would be defeated just like everyone else. On to the Emperor Bulblex. Now, this guy's a real one. One time when I was fighting it with Pikmin, the Emperor Bulblex that survived walked over, saw that what I did to his comrade was unacceptable, and decided to go over and seek vengeance. Despite his noble heart though, he was still defeated by Ochi. Water Wraith was next up. And no surprise here, you can't defeat this without purple pigment. You can, however, run in between its two rollers if you're good enough at Danduri, which means it's possible to run through with Pikmin as well. That's interesting. Groovy Long Legs, the best designed boss music I have seen in a Pikmin game. Now, Groovy did keep Ochi vibing throughout the entire fight, but the disco rave can only last so long, and therefore Groovy Long Legs was also defeated. And next up, Pokemon meets Pikmin. This boss is great and has some great mechanics, unfortunately. The two hitboxes on the side shrink, and it becomes increasingly hard to hit. I couldn't fully take them out, and the other one on top is just way too high up for Ochi, unless there's some method to get him up there, but I couldn't figure it out. So, I did the reasonable and most civilized thing and used explosives to finish the fight. Next up is the Snowfake Fluttertail. This one is immune to all damage when they have their frost coat on. I mean, bombs work? That's what I used in order to defeat it with Ochi. I guess that counts as incompletedly complete. The giant bread book. Because Ochi is more greedy than this character, he'll swallow the items and therefore you have to use Ochi without the swallow upgrade in order to defeat the giant bread book. We'll just let our bread boy carry items in peace because on this save file I wasn't able to defeat him. Machine gun meets Pikmin. We have the man at legs. And to my surprise, Ochi can actually damage him. It's not the same as biting its legs, but biting into the metal is actually pretty effective. Gotta try that later. So, after making Ochi dance around for a while, Man at Legs was finally taken down. The Sovereign Bulblex. Yet another enemy that had to be bitten to death because rushing doesn't work. Pretty much the same as the Emperor Bulblex, but bigger. Ochi takes this down easy peasy. 10 out of 10. The Smoky Prog. Spawning from Yoshi's Egg, the Prog can be defeated before it even spawns. If you do let it spawn though, Ochi is also able to 1v1 and he'll win every time. Ochi's Danduri skills are just far superior to the Smoky Brogs. Last and least, we have the Ancient Sirehound. Okay, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I like the Sirehound. Last but not least, we have the Ancient Sirehound. Yet again, Ochi cannot defeat this boss on his own because he can't weigh down the tail. But, strap Ochi with a bunch of explosives and he can use these armaments to defeat the bigger dog without any Pikmin. If using these items does count as Ochi winning, then chalk another enemy down. And I can use this in order to defeat all the other enemies on the list. If it doesn't count, then that pretty much concludes which bosses Ochi can and cannot defeat in Pikmin 4.